One of these reformers was Martin Luther, a German friar from the early 16th century. In 1517, it is said that Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of All Saints Church in Wittenberg. These 95 revolutionary ideas served as the catalyst for an eventual breaking away from the Catholic Church and were later instrumental in forming the movement known as the Protestant Reformation. Philip II of France built Rouen Castle between 1204 and 1210, following his capture of the region from John, Duke of Normandy and King of England. Located strategically outside the medieval city, the castle played an important military role in the Hundred Years' War and the Wars of Religion. Today, the only part of Rouen Castle that remains is this tower, named after a girl named Joan. And this is her story. Joan of Arc was born around 1412 to a tenant farmer in northeastern France. She wasn't taught to read or write, but her mother instilled in her a deep love for the church. At this point in history, France had been in a long, bitter conflict with England known as the Hundred Years' War. During Joan's childhood, England had gained the upper hand. At the age of 13, Joan began to hear God's voice. She said that God gave her the mission of saving France by defeating its enemies. She also believed it was her divine duty to see an embattled crown prince named Charles installed as its rightful king. At the age of 16, Joan cut her hair and dressed in men's clothes to make an 11-day journey across enemy territory to meet the crown prince. Joan promised Charles she would see him crowned King of France and asked him to give her an army to lead to the city of Orléans, then under siege by the English. Against the advice of most of his advisors, Charles granted her request. In March of 1429, Joan of Arc led an army to Orléans, dressed in white armor and riding a white horse. After leading several assaults, she ultimately forced England and its allies to retreat. In July of 1429, Joan and her troops escorted Charles across enemy territory to Reims, where he was crowned King Charles VII. It turns out Joan's reputation inspired French forces far and wide. A short time later, Joan was thrown from her horse during a battle and captured by the enemy. She was imprisoned in the tower here in Rouen for about a year. After a trial, Joan was found guilty of a variety of crimes, including witchcraft, heresy, and dressing like a man. At the age of 19, she was burned at the stake out in the marketplace in Rouen. Once her ashes were dumped into the River Seine, Joan's enemies figured her name would be erased from history, but her fame only grew. The humble farm girl had turned the tide for the French in the closing years of the Hundred Years' War. Her claim that God's voice led France to victory made her one of the most celebrated figures of late medieval history. In 1920, Pope Benedict XV officially canonized Joan of Arc as a patron saint of France. While Northern Europe is known for military figures in Christian history, such as Charlemagne, Olaf, and Joan of Arc, the region also has a rich history of Christian reformers. To tell the story of one such reformer, let's return to Germany. One of these reformers was Martin Luther, a German friar from the early 16th century. In 1517, it is said that Luther nailed his 95 theses to the door of All Saints Church in Wittenberg. These 95 revolutionary ideas served as the catalyst for an eventual breaking away from the Catholic Church and were later instrumental in forming the movement known as the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther was one of the primary reformers from the early 16th century. 
But there were other important voices from Northern Europe at that time, including Ulrich Zwingli and John Calvin from Switzerland. The basic motivation underlying the Protestant Reformation was to separate the gospel of Jesus Christ from the institution of the Catholic Church. Sola Scriptura, by scripture alone, was the common Latin expression used by the reformers. The Catholic Church ultimately responded with a counter-reformation initiated by the Council of Trent in 1545. In the end, Northern Europe, with the exception of most of Ireland, became Protestant, while Southern Europe remained Catholic. But just a few decades later, it would be the countries in the center of Europe that would be torn apart by the deadliest religious conflict in European history, the Thirty Years' War. Between 1618 and 1648, about eight million people were killed as a result of religious violence, famine, and plague. 